Sí. Cervical spine manipulation techniques. To begin this procedure, ask the patient to lie comfortably in a supine position on the treatment table. Place a small pillow beneath their head to maintain a neutral cervical spine alignment and ensure relaxation. As the practitioner, position yourself at the head of the table, maintaining an upright and balanced posture. Start by gently rotating the patient's head fully to one side and then bring it back halfway approximately 50% of the full rotation range. This mid-rotated position creates a mechanical advantage for both side bending and segmental targeting. Next, using your contact hand, locate the anatomical structure you intend to address. This may be the base of the occiput, the atlas, C1, or the transverse process of the axis, C2. With the MCP joint of your index finger, apply a precise but gentle contact to the chosen segment. It's critical to maintain a light touch throughout the procedure to avoid oh, activating God! protective oh, muscular reflexes. Your supporting hand should cradle the contralateral occipital area. Ah! This contact helps no, provide stabilization and directional control. Ah! The palm oh, should rest gently Christ. along the patient's zygomatic oh! arch, giving you leverage for traction and support. Once your contact points are established, begin to slightly flex the patient's neck to promote a chin to position. This subtle flexion helps relax the anterior oh, yeah. cervical musculature and aligns the spinal segments for safer manipulation. With the patient's head remaining supported on the pillow, never suspended in your hands, initiate a combined movement of side bending toward your contact point while simultaneously rotating the head contralaterally. This motion oh places God. a specific load on the segment you wish to influence. To facilitate this movement, Shift your body weight toward the side of contact in a uh, lunge stance. Uh, Keep your knees slightly uh, bent and your spine uh, upright. Your elbow uh, should remain tucked in close to your torso, uh, ensuring that your arm uh, is aligned with the intended God. line of drive. Sorry, this alignment is essential to deliver a focused and efficient thrust. Jeez. As you approach a motion <laughs> you will feel a subtle end range tension where soft tissue <laughs> really is right. minimized. Do not exceed this natural resistance. At this hey, point, this. instruct the patient to take a deep it. breath in <laughs> and then exhale fully. You may give a cue such as wiggle your toes to encourage complete relaxation, especially oh in patients who struggle to let go of cervical oh tension. Tray. The line oh of drive for C0-C1 manipulations is typically oh directed my. across the occiput into the side bending motion, accompanied what? by moderate traction from the supporting hand. When working on C1-C2, the thrust becomes slightly more rotational and is directed a bit lower to isolate the atlantoaxial joint specifically. Key Considerations For a left-sided occiput manipulation, the practitioner should contact the right occipital region and provide traction on the ipsilateral left side. For targeting C1-C2, the line of drive can be biased toward rotation or lateral flexion to emphasize the desired motion. Never grip the patient's neck. Light fingertip contact is essential for safety and precision. Always ensure the patient is entirely relaxed before delivering the thrust. Premature thrusting against muscle tension can trigger protective contraction and reduce the effectiveness of the technique. The pillow under the patient's head is not just for comfort, it serves as a passive guide for head movement and prevents you from needing oh. to bear the head's full weight. Supine Cervical Spine Manipulation, C2-C7 For manipulations targeting the mid to lower cervical segments, C2 to C7, the patient remains supine with a pillow under the head. However, raise the table height to around 30 degrees, allowing you to maintain ergonomic efficiency and spinal neutrality during the procedure. Stand to the side of the table, ipsilateral to your contact ah! point. Begin by locating the articular pillar of the involved vertebra using anatomical landmarks such as the spinous processes to guide your location. Your contact hand should be positioned so that the index finger's MCP joint rests gently on the targeted segment. Simultaneously, your supporting hand cradles the contralateral occiput with the polar aspect stabilizing the opposite side of the same vertebral level. Maintain a light yet firm hold being mm -hmm. cautious not to squeeze or brace the neck. Take up the skin slide by moving the MCP joint of your contact hand medially to laterally in the spinous process 
toward the articular pillow. This preparation step ensures a clean, isolated contact. With the patient's head still supported by the pillow, slightly flex the cervical spine by tucking the chin. Then, begin lateral flexion toward your contact point while adding contralateral rotation. This multi-directional movement engages the target oh, Jesus. and prepares the tissues for manipulation. Oh, Maintain God. close body mechanics. Help. Knees bent, shoulders relaxed, elbow oh, tucked, and your Jesus. forearm directed in line with the intended vector of thrust. Once the barrier is engaged, that is, when further movement meets natural resistance without excessive force, pause. Instruct the patient to breathe in and slowly exhale. Use relaxation cues again if needed. Upon complete exhalation and visible muscle relaxation, apply a high-velocity, low-amplitude HVLA thrust through your contact hand. The thrust should be crisp, controlled, and in the pre-established direction, maintaining slight, slight cervical flexion throughout. As you progress down the cervical spine towards C6 and C7, the contact point becomes deeper and lower, and the line of drive adjusts accordingly. Typically slightly inferior and more lateral or rotational, depending on the joint's specific biomechanics.